Hey, good morning. Um, I had a great uh, conversation yesterday with the Jehovah's Witness at my home. I think this is our fourth meeting. Yeah, great guy. Um, I think uh, he was. I, I would like to assume he was very honest when he said, you know, that his view. Um, there was a lot of things he didn't know in the Bible. He only knew certain things to kind of back up his thought. Uh, but uh, when I brought in other verses, he kind of... My favorite part is they will... Uh, I don't have to... He says, I don't have the answer to that, but I've got to go and research it. And they've got, I guess, a library. And, and I said, I guarantee you when you come back, it's going to be something what the Watchtower teaches but not the, what the Bible teaches um, but I said honestly when we read these verses what do you think right now what does it seem like to you as you read them and he, he agreed he said yeah absolutely this is it would it would seem just the way it reads absolutely but uh, <laughs> but Every time he went to research and comes back, it's always the contrary of what the scripture says. It's always either making the scriptures be fictional or it really kind of to fit whatever he believes it to be. So, I think a, Jehovah's, a person becomes a Jehovah's Witness because he already has preconceived idea of what the Bible should say or what God is like and therefore they go and find this institution or or better yet the other half is they are oblivious they've never even cracked the Bible in their lives so they go in they get programmed uh, by a watchtower institution that claims to be uh, Bible students uh, but me and this guy of course we've concluded that actually his little yellow book that says what does the Bible really teach we've concluded together that that title to that book is false and it's beef it's not fitting because for how it describes Christ I came with uh, I don't know four per one verse that's in there that also was left out about Jesus so he kinda concluded that that okay it it's not really the title is not befitting to that little book so we agreed on that now but yesterday after we talked for a while and then of course took he took a bunch of notes he's going back to the headquarters to to find I guess I don't know some other stuff uh, he and then I said why do you do that he goes well he mentioned Matthew chapter 24 verses 45 and I said let's go there and of course you know, I used Tada, his Bible so, when we went there there's a word in Matthew 45 uh, Matthew 24 verses 45 this is my favorite one okay this is the word I don't know if you can see it okay this word is discreet and I was kind of taken back I'm like discreet why would Jesus say discreet? It's kind of almost like illegal activity or almost like a mobster type of operation. Uh, Christ says the contrary, man. He says, let your light shine. Let go out. What is the use of a candle if it's under? It's covered under, you know, something to where the light doesn't shine. Go out there. Proclaim. That's what he says. But on this one, it's discreet, and I was like taken back. So of course, I went back to my other Bibles and translations. All of them use the serve uh, the word wise. It's just the wise servant, not discreet servant. So my question is going to be: If this implies only to the discreet slave, all that award and of course uh, punishment then and if those discreet slaves only a few of them that are locked in Brooklyn somewhere in, a, in an office building or something then what are the rest of Jehovah's Witnesses? 
if you're not a slave to Jesus, um, I'm not understanding it. And why is it discreet? Discreet is something, some illegal activity, or, or some form of adultery or an affair or something hidden. So why would it be discreet? Why is it discreet? Christ was out and the apostles were out and they went to their martyrdom. Why are these groups so discreet? What is there to hide?